Nobody wants a negative attached to their name if they're going to run for office again. So they start with a plausible deniability. If they meet with you directly, then they have to be responsible, as, as Mike was articulating, you're going to see me again, you're going to hear from me again. Failing that, there's no success. No funding. We had a 25% tax raise very recently, if you may recall. We spent, directed about $100 million in city resources downtown, and God bless the downtown, but back to the same issue in regard to gambling houses versus homicides. We have to reprioritize our response a little bit here. And there is a value to those in control, and I'm not talking about just City Hall, I'm talking about generically the decision makers, to keep you separate. And I have seen it when I go to the community meetings, they look to separate you by economics, they look in many cases to separate you by race, and any other method that will keep your message weak. This is exactly what you need to do. This is exactly what you need to do. A number of years ago, one of the guys who worked with me wrote a booklet to teach the, the community how to complain effectively. Because unlike you, a lot of the neighborhoods aren't organized well. And he articulated, do this, do this, do this. If you want to poke them and get a reaction, get a sharp stick and poke them. For which he was told his writing career was finished. Because they don't want to hear that. They want to keep the voices quiet. They want to neutralize your ability to make the change. This, this stuff is nuts. This is also why, in my opinion, we need a ward system. You need local representation. The, the, the good Lord himself would have a difficult time understanding in the 220 square miles that make up our city, the different neighborhoods that make us up with entirely different needs. My neighborhood, thank God, is by and large quiet. A lot of irritations, but not life and death by and large. And my neighbors no more understand what the hell is happening here, then they wouldn't know how to do brain surgery. They don't know. And by the way, anytime any of you want to take a walk in the neighborhood, I've done that in the past, I will be happy to do that with you again. Let me point out that I was a cop for 33 years, I still carry a gun, if you commit a crime, I'm going to hold your butt until somebody in a uniform shows up. May not be as good as I once was, <laughs> but I'm as good once as I ever was. <laughs> I want to hear people like Mike. You know, it's the whole different. Um, you know, Mel and some of the other folks that are here understand the cop perspective. We don't get information if you're not communicating to us. And unfortunately, sometimes you tell us things we don't want to hear. Well, you know what? Tough shit. Excuse me. Don't put that in there. <laughs> That's part of life. That's what the hell we do for a living. And I don't see the business of... Re representing the city as any different. You can't address what you don't know about. I'm guessing if the, the Titanic's captain had paid a little more attention when somebody said, you know, there's some icebergs out there, we would not be talking about that Titanic a hundred something years later. We would have prevented it instead of going to pick up the bodies. So we do things that are nice. We plant new flowers. We fix some things. And it's wonderful. I'm a gardener. But it's like putting fresh paint on the Titanic. Let me point out the reality. It looks marvelous, but you're sinking. The crap has to stop. You do not for one second stop what you're doing right now. I have no clue if I'm going to get elected or not. And as important as doing the job is to me, my life doesn't revolve around that. But it does revolve around the city of Columbus because I live here too. I'm not getting younger. And I want to know that one day I can walk around my neighborhood and not be fearful of something happening. And as much as used to be in this neighborhood when I worked here, I am staggered and nauseated by what you're showing on the screen. It is horrible. And you're right. The stuff gets imported, but we still have to deal with that. And one other point I want to throw out here, because it's a, it's a response issue, and um, you did a marvelous job summarizing some of the... Uh, potential responses. And I actually wrote about it when I said the one thing that we did not do in law enforcement, and it's not our job, but it's our necessity for our city, is exactly what you talked about. When they get paroled out and released, either on parole or without a parole, they're back in our community. The folks like you're talking about who are lifelong criminals, we need to find an island and lock them up. If, they're not gonna, if you're not going to participate as a law-abiding member of our city, get out. 
But if you have like the one, he did 19 years in a federal pen, a former gangster that shared with me. He said, the first problem when these young people come out, today doesn't matter, so you don't care what you do. You don't care. We have to start integrating the younger people back into our society. We have to re <coughs> reinvest in their sense of, of value of education. We're going to have to reach out to parents who have kids who do not know how to parent. You know, that's, I, I, and people tell me, well, it shouldn't be this, it shouldn't be that. I don't care. You've got to deal with reality. There are people out there with children, they don't know how to nurture and grow the child. So they go to school, education means nothing, and our poor school system is getting beat up, and sometimes they deserve some of the criticism. But in fairness, when I go to a high school and one in a hundred parents comes to talk about their kids, that problem is us. That you can't put on the schools. So... You know, there's no magic solutions, but I'm going to tell you what, there is a process for change. There is an opportunity to improve things. You have taken the steps. You are asking nothing that is unreasonable. Nothing. And I absolutely believe, and it's got nothing to do, anybody who's listened to my stuff before knows I said the same thing before I left the Division of Police. I believe in the community, and you talk about the officers, you're exactly right. They want to do the job. We politicize the process of policing. One of the downsides of a mayor and any mayor, I don't care who, appointing a chief of police is now the chief has to behave and not speak out about problems that need to be addressed. You know, even if I'm there, I'm going to do it with an independent organization to help evaluate candidates. And I have to have the guts, anyone in that office has to have the guts to listen to the negatives. It's not fun. I'll be the first to acknowledge that. But you know what? As, I don't remember who was that said it. That's what you got yourself involved with. Maybe it was you, Mike. Yep. You're, that's what you're getting paid for. If you can't, stand to heat. That's right. Get out. That's right. So, I'm out of here.